Hello there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do several silk ribbon embroidery techniques and also a couple of thread embroidery techniques. This video is intended to go along with the tutorial, a tutorial on how to make this really sweet pillow. So if you're interested, you can find it at keepsakecrafts.net. Go ahead and just type Victorian pillow, vintage pillow, silk ribbon embroidery into the search and you'll find all the detailed directions on how to put this pillow together. But for now, I'm just going to show you how to make some of the stitches that are on here. They're easier shown in a video than explained in words. The first thing we're going to do is make these ruched flowers out of ribbon and they're made from one and a quarter inch ribbon I've cut a 24 inch length of ribbon. You can do this technique with any size. That's what I've used to make those large ribbons, flowers out of the ribbon. Um, I've gone ahead and seamed my ribbon here, but before you do that, you want to mark it every two inches along the length. I've just used a white marking pencil and marked it. I've got a loop right now so I can make a flower. Every two inches. Then mark the other long side also every two inches, but offset one inch from your first marks. This way you get a zigzag pattern with all your marks. And if you cut a 24 inch length, they actually it works out that your final zig and zag work out to right here at the end. The next thing you'll need is just a needle and a length of thread. Make it at least 24 inches long. To anchor the thread at the end, start with a pin. And this is a fun trick I like to use. Find your oh, it's all staticky. Find your thread end and simply wrap a figure eight around that pin a few times. That will make it stay put while we stitch. And what we're going to do with this thread, hopefully you've got plenty of contrast here with the white and the red, is we're going to do a zigzag running stitch from one mark to the next. You can see my marks aren't real small, they're not real big, they're maybe a quarter of an inch. Uh, unthreaded. Wrap. Now when you go over the end of the ribbon, when you when you come to the edge of the ribbon, go over. So this stitch is on top, so I'm going to start my next stitch from underneath. That just helps it gather it more fully. And you can see I'm not being real fussy here. And you don't have to gather it all up at once, just keep going. That's the nice thing about anchoring your thread there, is you'll still have that end to pull when you're done, just by pulling out the pin. But in the meantime, you can't accidentally pull it out. Okay, I'm back. I'm just ready to do the last line of running stitches, the last zig or zag. And one thing to keep in mind is you want your threads to end up at the same place. So here's my beginning thread. My pin went AWOL, but that's okay. I was just careful not to pull on it. And if you do the measurements right, like I said, this is a 24 inch ribbon divided by two, so I used two inches as my increment and it worked out. I'm not sure about the math there, but if it doesn't work out, just kind of split the difference at the end. Make one a little smaller and one a little bigger so that your thread ends just end up at the same spot. So you can see I've gone all the way around. It's fairly loose, I mean, not, not very small running stitches. And now here's the fun part. So hold on to both your ends and start pulling. Can you see that? It just pulls up. Isn't that cool? I just love it. It's like magic. And we'll scooch those gathers along. In fact, now look at that. Isn't that pretty with the scallops? 
you can actually stop there. You could use a narrower ribbon, like, like a satin ribbon, and have this lovely little, tr if you pull it tight, you get petals, like on a flower, and if you do it loose, you get the alternating scallops. So you could do this with something narrower and make really pretty trim. But we're going to gather this up. And I'm going to put my finger in the middle. And you can see it's just two rows of petals. And I'm going to actually just tie this off in a knot. It's not really crucial. I just don't want it pulling out. That would be, that would be crucial. Sorry, I have to set this down. I know you probably can't see it. It's far away. There. Snip off that thread. Of course, you'd be using matching thread. So those little bits showing wouldn't show. And there's your flower. Now you say, how does that make a flower? Well, you've got petals on either side. And if you just flatten it out, squish all the petals from one side to the middle, and you can fiddle with it, and then there's your flower. And what we're going to do is stitch down the center with knots. So I'm going to, go, I'm going to show you that next. Actually, the first thing I'm going to show you set this aside for just a moment, is how to make the best use of your silk ribbon when you're embroidering with it. So once you've threaded your ribbon onto your needle, and you want to choose a needle that's fairly sharp and has a large eye. Whoop, don't fall out. Thank you. I don't know if you can see, it's got a pretty large eye. And you can trim your ribbon to a point to make it easier to um, thread the needle. Now, take your end, the short end, and poke your needle right through it, about a quarter of an inch from the end. Seems like a strange thing to do. Oh, well, it gets stranger. Slide that all the way down to the eye, and right over the eye, back onto itself. Slide that down. Now hold your long end of your ribbon in one hand and pull on the needle with the other. Did you see that? That is not is now it's not focusing. It's now locked on that needle. And as I mentioned in the blog, the beauty of this is that you use every single bit of your silk ribbon and you're not gonna fall off the needle. And when you're doing silk ribbon embroidery, a simple overhand knot is all you need in the end. Nothing fancy. I said I was going to show you how to make the knots I used in the, uh, on my pillow. But I'm actually going to show you first with some embroidery floss because it's easier to see. And then I'll show you also with the ribbon. Now I like to make what's called a colonial knot. I like it better than a French knot because it doesn't flop over and it's always perfectly round. So here's how you do it. You bring your thread or ribbon up through your fabric and hold on to it with your left hand. I'm sorry for you lefties, it would be your right hand, but you just have to reverse the directions. Take your needle, sweep it over the thread, put the tip under the thread. So the thread is going from where you came out of the fabric. It's going up over the right side of the needle and then under it off to the left where I'm holding it in my left hand. Next, Take your left hand and bring the thread over the needle and under it. This is why I wanted to show you this with embroidery floss because now you can see we've made a figure eight. And that's it. 
takes a little practice. I practiced it a bit before it felt natural. Now we just hold this. You see I just kind of pulled that, not super tight, just pulled it so that it gathered around the needle. And then pull through. And there you have, it's a perfectly round, flat, neat knot that doesn't, isn't going to flop over on you. I could never get French knots to behave for me. So I was ecstatic when somebody talked about this. And I'll show you one more time. Hold the thread off to the left with your left hand. Sweep the needle over and then the tip under. And then bring the thread over and under. Come down pretty close to where you came in. Pull it snug, not tight, just, just there on the needle. And pull it through. Isn't that great? We'll be using these at one point in the, um, in the pillow. Let me show you how, how these look with silk ribbon and tell you the difference. It's harder to see the figure eight, so I just wanted you to be able to see that. But it's done the same way. Hold it off to the left, sweep under, then over, come down right next to it. The important things when doing silk ribbon embroidery are to keep your tension nice and light, just taut. See, here's my pretty little knot. Isn't that lovely? And it's just clusters of these that are on the middle of the ruched flowers. Let me show you that again. Show you what you don't want to do with silk ribbon embroidery. So here's our knot again. I'm going to pull that really tight. And then when I go down, oops, sorry. It's like, well, that's not very nice. It's like nothing to it. The trick with silk ribbon, and the reason it looks so wonderful and luxurious, is the ribbon. Leaving it nice and loose and light allows it just to have these beautiful little folds. So in fact, that one, now see, I just left right there. I could pull it a little more. See? Ugh. It's just getting worse and worse. So you want to keep your knots just nice and light. And keep you actually that really is the secret for any stitch in um, silk ribbon. I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. This is a stitch I didn't use on my pillow. I was going to, but I didn't. And it can't be simpler, but it's so pretty. It's called the ribbon stitch. So you come up, and then you come down into the ribbon at the length you want your stitch to be. From where you come up to where your needle goes down is how long you want your stitch to be. And then you just pull. And when you get to this point, you just kind of get gentle. And look, you get that pretty little shape. You get that puff. And this is great for leaves, especially if you have wide ribbon or flower petals. I mean, how simple. See, I'm careful when I pull on the next one not to yank on this because I don't want to mess that up. So you just poke it down through. Now look what happens if I go like that. It's like, well, that's ugly. We don't want that. We want this. So keep your tension nice and loose and light. Next, I will show you another stitch. <laughs> 